Department of Energy Resources, and I'm ecstatic to be here in Boston at this uh, great project to talk about this project and a lot of other projects and the work that we're doing in this administration to help affordable housing decarbonize uh, throughout the Commonwealth. Thank you for joining us today to celebrate the second round of grant awards under our affordable housing decarbonization program. Uh, you see uh, our, our team behind us, this is a, a big team that's happening at all levels. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I recognize everyone. Obviously, uh, our great uh, Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. Uh, Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper. <laughs> Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus. <laughs> Under Secretary Maria Belen Power. <laughs> and then, of course, we're joined by uh, our partners in the legislature, Rep Honan <laughs> and Representative Vitolo and City Councilor Liz Braden. And behind me also is Chief Sheila Dillon from uh, the Housing, um, she's Chief of Housing and Director of the Mayor's Office of Housing in Boston. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about some of the programs, uh, the projects, um, some of our awardees are here as well, of course, uh, Caitlin Robillard from Alston Brighton CDC. She, of course, works with John, John Woods, who I think is hiding somewhere amongst you. We've got uh, Joel Wool from the Boston Housing Authority. Uh, Intia Ambroji Izaza from Madison Park Development Corporation. Nancy Bergeron from the Visiting Nurse Communities. and Yvette Dyson from Worcester Common Ground. So just a little bit about what we're here celebrating today. Uh, in 2023, DOER started this program with $50 million in funding. And during uh, initial applications, we quickly realized how strong of an interest this program was garnering. And the success of the program, let's face it, is due to the dedication of property managers, designers, and developers to bring the advantages of energy efficiency and electrification to affordable housing. So uh, congratulations to all of them. And then, of course, to my team, some of whom are here, Ben and Ian, uh, the folks at DOER who are trying to make this uh, possible and, and cutting some checks. Uh, there's... Their steadfast work made today's announcement a reality. Uh, today we are ecstatic to be announcing uh, the awarding of $26 million through this program to help fund five projects that will retrofit more than 625 housing units. It's, big. it's a lot of people's lives. Uh, and like the projects we funded last fall, these projects will improve the comfort, health, and monthly budgets of residents while creating opportunities for local jobs. This grant program will boost the growth of the deep energy retrofit sector in Massachusetts while modeling best practices for future projects. This will help us bring the benefits of our clean energy transition to even more residents. We know that we, how we build and retrofit our housing stock is critical to climate targets. Weatherizing and right-sizing, that's the unofficial motto right now of our Energy Efficiency Division. Weatherizing and right-sizing. Because when we fully weatherize buildings, we can right-size the heating and cooling systems, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, minimize energy burdens, and mitigate the impact on our electric grid. That's why DOER is committed to its stretch and specialized stretch energy code. We're in Boston. The uh, home of Specialized Energy Code. Um, we're committed to improving our energy efficiency plans and to continuing this grant program. Let me just talk a little bit about the grant awardees, and you'll hear a lot about them today, but that's because uh, these five projects are really something uh, to behold. First, of course, we're here at the Brian J. Honan Apartments, the Alston Brighton Community Development Corporation, and its project team 
will fully electrify heating and hot water, perform efficiency upgrades, and make the site solar ready. This project estimates more than 60%, 60% reduction in energy. That's huge for the residents, but it's also huge for the development corporation. They can reinvest that money uh, into their project for, for other needs for the residents. The Boston Housing Authority is undertaking a deep energy retrofit of Franklin Field in Dorchester, adding a ground source heat pump system, replacing gas stoves with induction, and the project there is going to reduce energy use by 55%. Over in Roxbury, the Madison Park Development Corporation and Trinity Financial is performing a multi-building deep energy retrofit and electrification project at Orchard Gardens. That pro project's going to reduce energy by 50%. Out in Worcester, the Worcester Common Grounds project is a four-building retrofit and electrification project in the city. The electric electrification and energy efficiency upgrades are expected to achieve between 65 and 73% reduction in energy consumption. I think they're winning, but I, I have faith <laughs> that this project will, will leap ahead of them. And then finally, uh, the Visiting Nurse Communities Project in Somerville is a full electrification of heating and hot water and deep energy retrofit. The project aims to reduce 40% uh, of energy savings. Together, these projects, like I said, are going to impact 625 homes, the majority of which are low to moderate income. With this grant program, we're showing that when we invest in housing, when we weatherize and right size, building owners and residents win. Congratulations to the project developers on these innovative deep energy retrofits. Uh, we're really excited to be continuing to work with you. And uh, right now, I'll turn it over to Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. Thank you, Commissioner Mahoney, and to you and your team for all the great work you're doing, really leading in this effort as we think about en deep energy retrofits. These are not terms that we talked often enough about over the past few years. We now have the resources to really think about how we put not only that term, um, but those opportunities to put equipment and inventory in places like this beautiful residential community that's not only going to help the rent the tenants that are here but also help us as a commonwealth grow this industry help our planet as we move forward so it's terrific to be in Alston this afternoon to not only talk about affordable housing and affordable homes something that we are deeply committed to but also decarbonization how do we put those two together and celebrate all of today's awardees this has been a major initiative of Governor Healy from day one. How do we build a more resilient future and how do we lead in that effort? And I think today's project and announcement is an example of that. So pleased that we're joined by um, Representative Kevin Honan. Kevin, I can't think of a better way to honor and recognize the contributions of your brother than having this residential community named after him. So glad that you're here. Representative Tommy Vitola was also joined us, a stalwart who's been so helpful as we think about building a more resilient future. Uh, Councilor Liz Breeden, we're in your, in your home court advantage uh, for, for you here. Uh, so grateful that you're here. We're also pleased to be joined with so many members of our administration, as I mentioned, the commissioner. But you have two secretaries with you in addition to that. Secretary Rebecca Tepper, who I'll introduce afterwards, who's really putting in a 100% effort to ensure we're thinking about energy, environmental opportunities for us to grow as a commonwealth, leading a great team, continues to work hard to do that work every day. Our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus, who's been a true champion in us carving out for the first time having a housing secretary in 30 years and carving out a path forward leading with the type of housing we need in this commonwealth for all of us. Um, and certainly um, Commissioner Mahoney and her team, who is again, really cutting edge, taking advantage of all of the federal resources we have. We're also joined by one of our QALSIs, Mass Housing Director of Policies and Programs, Maggie Church, and obviously our partners right here at the Alston Brighton CDC. You know, I'm a huge fan of CDCs. I think the work that our CDCs do are the scaffolding in our neighborhoods, not only from the housing, but from all of the empowerment issues and putting that together in a way um, to ensure that we have neighborhoods that are strong and vibrant. John and your team here really do that every day preserving affordable housing, creating vital services, and those opportunities for the community's residents. So thank you for being here and for hosting us for sure. 
This clean energy transition that we are you know, leading here in Massachusetts is go are going to benefit residents across the entire Commonwealth. Clean energy and affordable homes certainly go hand in hand, and a prime example of that is right here at the Brian Honan Apartments. Residents of affordable housing deserve access to modern, clean, and efficient homes, and they need to make sure that we're put we need to make sure that we're putting them in place in a way that can help them realize the savings and provide that healthy, livable community. That's why one of our first steps as an administration was to honor that commitment to ensure that we're thinking about the next generation of the affordable housing we have and how we can serve them better and decarbonizing these, these precious resources that we have. We launched a $50 million investment called the Affordable Housing Decarbonization Grant Program. Today I'm excited to announce an additional $40 million that we're investing in that program. So necessary. And, and truly, these are investments that you just can't tackle on your own. It really takes a partnership between um, local affordable housing development owners and state government and oftentimes federal government to help us have the resources we need. And when you think about it, um, residents who are, who are living in our affordable homes are often disproportionately impacted by the brunt of climate change and high energy costs. And so putting them at the front line when we have these opportunities to think about ways that we can use the benefits of electri electrification to their benefit is really key. Providing cleaner indoor air to breathe, more comfortable homes even during heat waves, and lower monthly energy costs. That's what we really call a win-win-win. The program also ensures housing are, is updated by these projects will remain affordable for years to come. So we're, we're putting an extra exclamation point to make sure that as we make these investments, we're going to continue to support our most vulnerable members of our community. And we're strengthening regional economies across the state by providing good job opportunities for local workers. Here in Alston, this investment of $2 million will help fully electrify residents' heating and hot water, lay the groundwork for a solar system, and wrap the building in better insulation so apartments can be more comfortable and use less energy. Super important when you think about New England where we have both winter and summer. So you've got those higher electricity costs and higher demand needs when it comes to keeping homes comfortable. And it's giving us this opportunity to really lead as a commonwealth in finding the best technologies. The commissioner and her team I think we spent 20 minutes talking about insulation, size, style, type, what you can do to ensure, depending on your building, that you have the right combination of materials to be the most efficient in tackling these needs. We're so proud in Massachusetts to be a national leader in this space, moving away from fossil fuels, and especially proud that as we're making this transition, like we're putting people first. The people who are disproportionately impacted the most are being put first and taking every advantage of every opportunity we can between state and federal resources. Just earlier today, it was announced that we're receiving $450 million, that's $450 million, from the EPA to create a New England heat pump accelerator. Pretty important. I believe that's about $100 million to Massachusetts, but this was a, a regional grant. We partnered with Connecticut, Maine, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, um, Rhode Island, Maine, New Hampshire, and us, right? I got them all. And Connecticut, thank you, and Connecticut. Um, which this is going to help us in terms of creating an opportunity for manufacturers, distributors, and contractors to really ramp up and create that pipeline to reduce costs for heat pumps as we go forward. That's part of a federal grant that the commission and her team have been working on. We are so thrilled, and thinking about this regionally is really important because if we can have these conversations regionally about opportunities for grants like this, it really strengthens our relationship for everything else, whether it's the grid or upgrades we need to make as we think about the delivery of energy. So super exciting day for us and that federal announcements. And, you know, the governor has been really clear. We want to go after every single dollar we can. She is pushing us every single day to be more affordable, more equitable, more competitive. Those aren't just words on a paper or a tagline. It's really critical. And there is this sense of urgency when it comes to going after federal resources. So this is another $100 million on the list to the $3 billion we've already received. And we, were, we are continuing to aggressively pursue federal funds so we can be a good partner on the ground to local communities um, every chance we have. We're going to continue, as I said, to pursue these cost-effective strategies as well. We are learning a lot along the way, keeping us at the leading edge of the clean energy transition. And again, that's not only good for the people who live here and the countless other properties that will be impacted by this grant and the one before it and the ones to come, 
but also it's great for our economy and frankly it's great for our planet. We're expected to lead, we're expected to be responsible with these resources. We take that very seriously and we're so thrilled today to celebrate with all of you investments that are going to make a meaningful impact on the people who are living here every single day. So thanks for joining us. Looking forward to all that comes next. And I have the good fortune to introduce the Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper, who I mentioned. We've really built a strong team trying to ensure that we're using every resource that we can to put Massachusetts at the forefront of both energy and environmental policy. Secretary Tepper. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming out today. And it is such an exciting day for us. Um, you know, this program is one of our favorite programs, and part of the reason for that is the number of people that are involved in making this happen. Contractors, architects, workers, people who are living in the homes. I mean, there, it, as, the gov as the lieutenant governor said, you know, it really does take a village, and this has been, over the last year, a real village opportunity for all of us to really start being creative about how we're going to make affordable housing decarbonized and how are we going to help the residents that are living there and the announcement today that this program is now going to be a 90 million dollar program just makes me so proud that our team has worked so hard to make this happen and I know all of your teams have worked hard to make it happen and really look forward to seeing your next bids um, and looking forward to seeing all the great projects that you are you are putting forth I mean it's it's one of those programs where it's so gratifying that in the end, we know that there'll be a certain number, 650 units, that will be changed. People's lives will be changed because of that, and really, really excited about it. Um, I just wanted to note that uh, members of my team are here. Undersecretary Maria Blum Power um, is here with us. Um, and I think that the progress that we have made with this program is really exciting and allows us to, the success of the last year is allowing us to add another $40 million to the project. And through these energy retrofits, we're reducing emissions, creating more comfortable living spaces, and lowering cost. You know, building decarbonation is a key component of our clean energy and climate plan. And to meet our climate goals, we need to address this now. And buildings, as you all know, are a key, a big source, a main source of our emissions in Massachusetts. And we're going to need to upgrade millions of buildings like we're doing here, uh, from insulation to windows and roof upgrades and installing electric heating and cooking equipment. These retrofits are essential for our sustainable future. Our administration is committed to decarbonizing buildings and ensuring affordable housing remains accessible for our kids and grandkids. Equity is at the forefront of our work as we strive to rectify past injustices by supporting low and moderate income residents and environmental justice communities. You know, we're working on a lot of fronts to build healthier living communities. Our award-winning Mass Save program is getting an update to better serve its climate goals and customers. The new stretch and specialized stretch building codes are going to deliver $21 billion in cost savings. Our updated Green Communities Program will continue to empower cities and towns to lead the energy transition. And we are aggressively going after billions of federal funds to decarbonize affordable housing. So thank you all very much for being partners with us in this effort. We look forward to seeing you again when the next time we announce these awards for the next great round of projects and look forward to the ribbon cutting for, for the others. So thank you very much and I'd like to introduce Secretary Augustus. Thank you, Secretary Tepper, and I'm, it's great to be here with the Lieutenant Governor, who's so knowledgeable about all issues housing and so passionate about housing and creating opportunities for folks across the Commonwealth to have safe, healthy, uh, dignified places to live. Uh, it's great to be here with all my colleagues uh, in the administration, uh, as well as our friends in the legislature, and in particular, Rep. Honan and Rep. Vitale have been real leaders uh, in this kind of co-space of uh, making sure that we're doing everything we can to meet our climate goals and making sure we can do everything we can uh, to meet the housing needs of the people of the Commonwealth. So I want to thank them and their strong support for the Governor's Affordable Homes Act, uh, which is going to bring additional resources to this effort of decarbonizing uh, our housing stock, particularly focused on our public housing stock. Uh, in the Governor's bill, 
there's $150 million that's set aside to uh, focus on decarbonizing our 43,000 units of state-owned public housing across the Commonwealth. We know this is a critical uh, part of our housing safety net system uh, that's located in 230 cities and towns across the state. Uh, and with these new resources, we're really going to be able to make sure that we complement the efforts that are being done with these, this grant program to retrofit units. Uh, we're going to really uh, accelerate that effort through the Affordable Homes Act and that $150 million uh, that is in that program uh, to do that. You know, the benefits that have been talked about are clear on the uh, climate and the resiliency side, but they're also uh, clear on the quality of homes side of things. This is going to reduce the cost of energy, uh, whether those bills, sometimes they're borne by the tenants of the unit, sometimes they're borne by the uh, housing authority or the CDC. Uh, either way, it's going to mean more dollars that are going to be able to be in those organizations' pockets or in the families or individuals who live in those units' pockets. That's a good thing. But also those units are going to be healthier. They're going to be safer. Uh, they're going to be more comfortable. The quality of life for the people who call those units home is going to be improved. Uh, and that really is another important goal that's advanced uh, by these grants that are being announced today. So uh, I'm just excited to be here with all of these uh, great partners who, again, work together, work across uh, agencies, work across levels of government uh, to make sure that our eye is on the ball moving our climate agenda forward and moving our housing agenda forward in concert with each other. Uh, and in that intergovernmental, uh, interagency theme, I want to introduce another great partner of ours uh, here in the city of Boston, uh, who is always uh, at our side as we advance projects here in our capital city, uh, Sheila Dillon, the head of housing for the city of Boston. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. And I'll... I'll I'll be brief, but on behalf of Mayor Wu, I'm very pleased to be here today, not only to celebrate the funding award for the Brian Honan Apartments, which we all love very, very much, um, but also to acknowledge and lift up the state's continued investment in the Affordable Housing Decarbonization Grant Program. And while it doesn't have a great name, it certainly has a great, great mission. And within that, they're funding two additional Boston projects, the Franklin Field Apartments, uh, owned and managed by the BHA in Dorchester and Orchard Gardens in Roxbury. All three of these Boston projects are also receiving city funding and combined the city and state investments will eliminate or greatly reduce the reliance on fossil fuels, significantly improve energy efficiency and prepare some of the buildings for solar readiness. It's just, it doesn't get more important than that. In addition to helping us meet our collective climate goals, this work, most importantly, it's been mentioned several times, but it probably bears repeating, will improve the indoor air quality for the residents who live in these communities and solidify the financial health of these developments. Energy is getting more and more expensive. These affordable housing developments have a lot of needs. We bring down the costs. We make them more viable for decades to come. You know, I think about the you know, the, the need to build a lot more affordable housing, and the state's got that on the brain as well, and making much more energy efficient and re ending the reliance on fossil fuels for our existing affordable housing projects. I do get overwhelmed. There does not feel to be enough resource out there. But like most of our big problems, um, if we all continue to work together year after year, I am pretty confident that we will get this done. I did want to take just a quick second and acknowledge folks in the city that were here today that have worked really hard on this very issue. Joe Backer uh, and Kristen Simmons from the Mayor's Office of Housing. Yeah, give it up. And um, the one and only Joe Wool from the Boston Housing Authority who lives and breathes this every single day. And in closing, I, I do want to thank the state for their ongoing partnership on this issue and so many other issues as well. Their commitment to the environment, our collective housing needs, and making sure that our low-income residents across the state can stay and thrive in Massachusetts. So I'm really looking forward to the partnership growing and expanding and getting even more of these done in the future. But so thank you, thank you, thank you. It is my, uh, it is my uh, pleasure now to invite up 
Um, Caitlin Robillard, she is the Director of Real Estate for the Alston Brighton CDC, and she will be overseeing, along with John Woods, this important work. Good afternoon. My name is Caitlin Robillard. I'm the Director of Real Estate Development at the Alston Brighton CDC. First, I would like to acknowledge the forward-thinking efforts of the public officials gathered here today. It's really incredible, so thank you. The funding secured from the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, administered by the Department of Energy Resources, represents a commitment by our elected policymakers to address the root causes of the climate crisis. This $2 million in state funding will be combined with the earlier $1.5 million award made by the City of Boston through the Mayor's Office of Housing's new retrofit fund. Through both of these funding and commitments, an important message is being sent about the role of green building design in preserving and enhancing deeply affordable housing. Decarbonization is now a viable option and truly the only path forward. The work that we are undertaking at the Brian J. Honan Apartments will provide real-world application of some of the most advanced green building techniques. This rehab will be designed to meet passive house standards and, most importantly, will eliminate the need for fossil fuels completely. I'd like to thank the hardworking folks who have supported the vision for this project, patiently addressing our countless questions along the way. Um, they've been mentioned, but bears repeating. Ben Silverman at the Department of Energy Resources, as well as Joe Backer and Kristen Simmons at the Mayor's Office of Housing. Uh, we're lucky to have a great team working on this project, including Bev Gallo, Onion Flats Architecture, Haycon, Resonant Energy, New Ecology, RMI, Mass Clean Energy Center, Lisk, Massachusetts, and our incredible property management firm, Maloney Properties. It takes a lot of people to make these projects work. Um, I also want to acknowledge our board members who are here, Diane Klein, Brighton Liu, John Heaster, Lauren Earlsinger, and Howard Sachs. So thanks to this targeted state and city funding, Alston Brighton CDC will help to ensure that these 50 homes will be preserved for future generations. We're truly grateful for being selected to move forward with this innovative project and look forward to having you all join us again to tour the site post rehab so you can witness firsthand the benefits of facing our energy challenges head on. Thank you. I'm going to invite up Representative Honan. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I want to thank the Lieutenant Governor and the Governor for putting together this extraordinary team of leaders, both in the environmental area and the housing area. Um, I was the chair of the Housing Committee in the legislature for 17 years. And um, when Kim was the mayor of Salem, she would testify before us and provided great leadership on all the housing agenda that we would try and advance in the legislature at that time. And now she's just such a champion. We're so fortunate to have you there, Kim. And uh, thank you for coming to our neighborhood so often. Um, this you know, property is named after my brother and our family is very grateful. Brian was the chair of the housing committee on the Boston City Council and cared a great deal about this area and grew up here. Uh, he also was the coordinator of the CDC Summer Youth Employment Program, uh, which rehabilitated the park that's right back here, Peniman Park. He had a wonderful group of kids. He was a student at Boston College at the time, and they rehabbed that. And uh, so we're just very grateful. And right over behind us, uh, you have a new state-of-the-art stop and shop. You have a bowling alley. You have a rock concert venue. You have the commuter rail stop, Ed, that goes right to Worcester, right out here, right out. So you could live here and work at the medical area in Worcester if you want to live around here. <laughs> you can, uh, so th this is just a vibrant, dynamic community that I was so proud to grow up in, like Brighton Lou and Andrew. They're, he's a charter member of the CDC, like my Uncle Charlie was. And uh, the great work you do at the CDC, we're so pleased with. There is a housing crisis, an environment crisis, and we need you to continue to lead the way, and we'll be there to help you every step of the way. So thank you, Governor. Thank you, Commissioner, Secretary, Secretary. 
and Sheila, my good friend, for all the work you do out here to try to make the city and the Commonwealth affordable for everyone to live here, young people, old people. And thank you very much for allowing me to say a few words. That's my friend Tommy Vitolo, who's a huge environmentalist from Brookline. He came all the way here today from Brookline. And Liz Breeden is over here, our wonderful city councilor. I came all the way over on my bicycle, in fairness. Um, my name is Tommy Vitolo, and I am delighted to be here. I'm not going to repeat all of the things that I believe in that other people have said, but I do want to emphasize that the Healy Driscoll administration has been laser focused on investing in our Commonwealth, not just for today and tomorrow, but for decades to come. And they're doing it with this grant program in two really important ways. The first is they're investing in the existing housing so that we can continue to operate it safely and comfortably for decades to come instead of just letting it hang out until the heating system finally kicks the bucket and tenants are cold and staff members are scrambling to try to fix it at the last minute. Investing at the right time is so important for our communities. The other thing is, in making these investments, they're investing in the supply chain and all of the workers who we need to decarbonize our entire economy. And so everyone in HVAC, all of those architects and engineers, all of those attorneys and real estate professionals that are necessary to decarbonize not just the 650 units in this go around, but the millions of housing units in our Commonwealth, we need to bring them up. We need to improve their skills. We need to expand the number of union and non-union labor that can perform these important tasks. And this program is helping to do that. We're at the beginning of a journey. We've got a long way to go, and I'm just so grateful for the Healy Driscoll administration for really getting this stuff and making sure they've got great people and then letting them go do great work. So thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to keep it really brief. Um, I'm so on pleased to see that this additional uh, investment has been made in our neighborhood here at the CDC housing at Brian J. Honan Apartments, but also all across the city. Um, as we recently experienced, uh, climate change is real. We're going to get more extreme weather events. Uh, insulation, I'm a big proponent for insulation. You get a lot of bang for your buck with insulation. And it helps keep our homes cooler in the heat of the summer and warmer in the, heat of the, in the, in the cold of the winter. And it reduces energy costs for communities like the Alston Brighton CDC, but also for the individuals who live in these apartments. And it's uh, critically important that, uh, to make our, our, our housing more habitable as we go forward and we experience more extended lengths of extreme weather like we've had in the last few weeks. So, uh, I'm really, really excited. I think this is going to be an incredible proof of concept and show the, get some really good numbers of how effective this is and I hope that we go from strength to strength and continue to uh, make this incredible investment. And thank you to our colleagues and partners at the state level and the incredible investment that this is doing. It's forward thinking and very, very necessary. So thank you all. Thanks so much, and uh, I'll just remind everyone, you all can participate in this too. Make sure you call Mass Save and get your own audit and uh, get your own insulation done. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. This was a great celebration, and, and like the Secretary Tepper said, we're gonna have another round of this, so if you know someone who's working in the affordable housing space, I mean, we know them, ben, Ben's been talking to them, uh, but encourage them to apply because we, we love to come out and see these projects and fund these projects. So thank you all for coming. We're gonna take a photo and uh, celebrate some more. Thank you.